homecoming, North Dakota State kicked things into high gear in the second half, pulling away from Northern Iowa to remain unbeaten at 6-0. And although a road gauntlet is coming, there is still business to take care of at home, hosting Missouri State at the Fargo Dome. All the hard-hitting action is coming up next. Get your horns out! City Bank Field as North Dakota State 6-0 on the season takes on the Missouri State Bears. Brian Sean and Lee Timmerman with you. Ryan Geller will join us from the sidelines as two programs heading very different directions clash here today. Uh, they certainly do. One of the stated goals for NDSU today is to try to get some twos and threes into the game. Well, that falls on the starters. You must be efficient, you must be good, and you must build an early lead to accomplish that. There's a look at Matt Entz, the head coach for North Dakota State. And Dave Steckel in his fifth season, spent 14 years on the staff at the University of Missouri, was the defensive coordinator there before taking the head coaching job. Just 13 and 36 here in his fifth year. North Dakota State will have the football first. There's a look at Ty Brooks. Busted a long return a couple of weeks ago. He was joined by Marquise Bridges. And we are underway at Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kickoff your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Brooks thought about it for a moment. He decides to take a knee at North Dakota State. We'll start at the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at the North Dakota State offense sponsored by Shields. Trey Lance, Marshall, Minnesota. Dylan Radins, Becker, Minnesota. Nash Jensen, Oshawa, Minnesota. Carson Schroeder, Ryan North Dakota. Zach Johnson, Spring Lake Park, Minnesota. Ronald Wilson, Belfort, North Dakota. Ben Ellison, Holly, Minnesota. Aaron Mercer, Burgess, Minnesota. Todd Brooks, Fargo, North Dakota. Christian Watson, Tampa, Florida. Phoenix Brawls, New Hope, Minnesota. First play for North Dakota State, Adam Colfield. Gaining just a yard before he is game tackled. Coming up to help on that stop, Darius Joseph. One of the corners on that team, and there's a look at Trey Lance. Boy, spectacular numbers here for the redshirt freshman. Numbers sponsored by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by Beef Farmers and Ranchers. 15 touchdowns, no interceptions on the season. He's been great also on third down. 71% completion percentage, which is fourth best in the FCS. Round game again, this time some room for Cofield, putting the shoulder pads down. And he is wrapped up after a pretty good game. Coming in to help make that tackle was Greg McAllister, junior safety out of Oklahoma City, will bring up third in about three. I know you saw him in the Shield starting lineup, but Garrett Maelstrom is not going to be able to play today. He's uh, dealing with the knee, so Hunter Lupke, number 44, the redshirt freshman from Spencer, Wisconsin, is in at that fullback position. Out right now with this formation, get a really solid lead block on that last pickup on, on the ground. The Bison, sixth in the FCS and third down percentage, 54% on the season. Trey Lance, time, fires right at the sticks. Catch is made by Jimmy Capurris, and that should be enough for a first down. And Carter right there on the stick. As soon as Capurris caught the football, the battle would be enough. The pass completion on what the Bison call their quick game, meaning it is out of Trey Lance's hands very quickly and also into the receiver's hands for the first down here. It's this quick types of strikes that have given Lance some really good tempo in the passing game early on. There are three receivers into the boundary here on first and ten. Lance is going to air it out. One-on-one -on -one coverage to Zach 
at this. Reaching out and unable to make the catch. Coverage from Jalen Henderson, a true freshman for Paris, Texas, that has been forced into a starting role because one of the cornerbacks for Missouri State entered the transfer portal this week, Zach Sanders. Zach Sanders is probably their probably their best defensive player, and he decided he no longer wants to be a part of the program. So 36 right here, Sanders, he is no longer on the team, which is why you had the matchup that Brian just talked about with Henderson guarding Mathis. Matt McClellan, also a standout defensive end, has three sacks, that starting lineup, sponsored by Shields. Back to the Brown game, boy. Getting going on, and there's a football, looked like somebody was reaching for it, but Ty Brooks taken down after no game. There is decent um, experience in the linebacker core as well, though. I think, you know, you've heard uh, the names Eggman and uh, Garvin. You know, they've played for a while. Loveless has made some really nice uh, uh, plays as well. The three linebackers for this Missouri State team. That was McClellan coming in from his defensive end spot to hog tie Ty Brooks. Third and ten coming up for North Dakota State. Lance stepping into it, gunning across the middle and overshooting Papyrus. And North Dakota State, after getting one first down, will have to bring on the punting unit. The Bears have not showed a lot this year to be a team that blitzes heavily. But on that particular third and long, they did bring a couple of linebackers off of what would be Lance's passing side. And uh, he, he had a guy open, just missed him a little bit on a very tight window over the middle. Garrett Wegner on to punt, averaging just over 41 yards per boot this season. Nice snap. When they're able to control and that kind of a wobbler. Takes a bounce at the 27. Trickles along to about the 23-yard line. Marquise Bridges will down it. And here come the Bears on offense. Well, the Bears defense just has done something that nobody else has been able to do against NDSU so far this year. Let's take a look at the North Dakota State defense sponsored by Shields. Logan McCormick, Kimberly, Wisconsin. Cole Fudge, Jeremy Town, Wisconsin. Jack Dunlap, Chapter, Minnesota. Derek Tesco, Warner, South Dakota. Warren Lickerdale, Elton, California. Jack Zunanke, Park Bowl, North Dakota. Jabril Fox, Kansas City, Missouri. Marquise Bridges, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Michael Tutsi, Indianapolis, Indiana. James Hendricks, Bemidji, Minnesota. Josh Ayers, Lakeland, Florida. And Guslick, the starting quarterback for Missouri State, had to get rid of that ball quickly. Pressure coming, and Tyler Curry, his intended target, had not yet turned around by the time that ball was delivered. Uh, just to follow up and finish that point, this is the first time that NDSU's offense has not scored a touchdown on an opening drive this year. That's the point that the Bears' defense was able to pull off. We saw a quick shot at Spencer Wagey, his first career start today for Derek Tuska. Curry makes the catch. Boy, the Bison all over it. Marquise Bridges. Throws Curry to the ground for no gain. Well, in order to make a tunnel screen work, that's the guy you have to block. The corner who is guarding on the outside against Curry. And uh, that time, Bridges was able to jump that initial block, stay on the inside of it, and force the third and long. We well done, Marquise. We had talked about North Dakota State's third down efficiency. Well, the Bears are on the opposite spectrum. 26%, oh. which is 122nd, fifth worst in the nation. It lines up with the Bison 27.7% of the time. The Bison are getting off the field on third down. Huslig hanging in there, firing. That ball may have been deflected and well off target anyway. And a three and out for the Bears. Uh, it looks like Curry decided to run the inside drag back to the middle between the safeties. His uh, quarterback did not see that and he threw it to the out. Dave Steckel. It was a few years ago, LT, when Dave Steckel was supposed to make a trip here and had some eye surgery, and he couldn't, couldn't fly with it. the team, so he, he actually had to drive It's some bad weather, if I recall. Yeah. And you're right, Brian, that was tipped a little bit. Back insurance company replay. Brendan Withrow on for his first punt of the day. Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Week. That's a on October 7th. And boy, he tried to try to hype back to his own 21. And hype has been electric in the return game, and a pretty good return here. About 14 yards to the 35-yard line. 11:15 to go in the first quarter. We're still zeros on the A Country Farm and its services scoreboard.
City Bank is proud to support the NDSU Bison. Show your Bison pride today with a, a free NDSU Gate City Bank debit card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. Second possession for the Bison from the 35-yard line and a play action for Lance. Firing on the comeback and making the reception as he goes to the turf is Christian Watson, gain of eight to the 43-yard line. Let's go to Ryan Gellner, who's with us on the sidelines today. Hi, guys. It's a First International Bank and Trust <laughs> sideline report and a bit of a rarity for North Dakota State. Prior to this game, the first six games for NDSU, they scored six touchdowns on their opening drives. Today, a three and out, so that streak, guys, is snapped. Back up to you. All right, thank you so much, Ryan. Lance firing to Phoenix Sproles, and he's up to the 49-yard line. Getting down to the play by Paris Jackson. And that'll be enough for a North Dakota State first down. One thing about Trey Lance, too, you, you can't say that he is picking favorites. Yeah, there wasn't a legal formation oh, on the far side. Covered. Yep. So that'll negate the first down and back up the Bison to the eight-yard line. Let's just go back to that point with Lance. He's been an equal opportunity uh, spread the ball around kind of guy. If you're open, he'll hit you. A lot of different players. And somebody jumped early there. It may have been Cordell Volson on the right side. Ball start. Offense number 68. Second down. It's Zach Johnson for moving early, so what was a second and two is now a second and 12. Well, it was a first down <laughs> at one point. Now, this is not the crisp start that anyone associated with the Bison wanted. Delta formation. Here is today's officiating crew from the Missouri Valley Conference. And a run to the outside. Bottled up pretty well by the Bears. Bears do a nice job in pursuit so far, and that is also Jackson coming up from his linebacker spot, the sophomore from Fort Worth, Texas, to make the tackle as Dimitri Williams gets the carry. I thought Anthony Payne, one of the defensive ends from the backside, did a nice job of running that uh, play down. Your Nodak Insurance Company replay, trying to cut it up off that block pain. Number 33, sophomore from Kansas City. So third and long again here for the Bison. Man coverage everywhere, no safety deep at all. Cam Carter, the safety, is in the box. Lance surveying across the middle and diving to make the reception at the 49 is Kapuris, his second reception of the day. He ended up being lined up against Austin Henderson, that safety down in the box you talked about. Here's your replay, looking left, nothing there. Look back for your drag. Delivers a nice strike. We've said it before uh, about Trey Lance. Once he gets the ball in the trigger position, meaning that arm and ball is back by his ears, that he is super quick to get that ball out of his hands. It's really fun to watch this young kid. Well, Missouri State's been jumping around a lot on the defensive line so far. Lance stepping up in the pocket. Boy, wide open man in the flat there is Ellison putting the shoulder down and picking up another first down to the 24 yard line. Gain of about 27 there for the senior tight end out of Holly, Minnesota. It looked to me that the Bears were so worried about trying to scheme things right that they forgot <laughs> to, to play the play. There was only, I think, one guy out of the four that had his hand on the ground from the defensive line, and the Bison took advantage. It's just wide open. Ben Elson sits down right there in front of the safety. And the Bison had a big pickup and another first down. Mathis in motion to the high side of your screen here on first and ten. Gain of three for Ty Brooks to the 21. We talked about it last week. Missouri State at lopsided score at halftime. It was just 7 7 after the first quarter, LT. And then about four things went wrong in a five minute span, and you blink, and it was 31 7 on the day. Yeah, from 7 7 to 31 7 against the Coyotes, just like that. And it happened on both sides of the ball, so you can't just pinpoint that it was all on the defense, the offense. I had mistakes in that stretch as well. Quarterback run for Lance. He's got room to the middle. Lance stepping out of a tackle. Touchdown. Well, he's a 
among the leaders in points responsible for in the country in the FCS. And here, after the fake, beautiful hole. Nice job on the second level by Nash Jensen to, to get in on the linebacker. Takes care of that deep block. And then there goes rushing touchdown number seven on the year for Trey Lance. James Hendricks going to look to run it in for two. Takes the snap and he's in. Matt Evans continues to put pressure on opposing defenses in this two-point scheme. And the Bison have converted that three times now this season and lead it eight to nothing with 7.40 to go in the first quarter on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. Trey Lance, a 21-yard dash to the end zone, and the Bison lead it. Number 30, Eric Wagner will take on. 8-0, North Dakota State leads here, 7.40 to go in the first quarter. Ryan Sean, Lee Timmerman, and Ryan Gellner with you from the Fargo Dome. As Kara Wegner gets set to boot this one away to the Bears. Back deep is Jock West Carter, sophomore out of Naples, Florida, for Missouri State. Another Peterson Barnes seat kickoff, kickoff in the season with Peterson Barnes seat. This one, four yards deep, be taken, and the Bears will start their second drive at the 25. Bobcat scoring the recap. Six plays, 65 yards. 21-yard rushing touchdown. Big third down conversion. Jimmy Kapuris making a second reception. The big pass play to Ben Ellison, and then two plays later, it's Lance taking it in. I also wanted uh, just a shout-out, too, to Nash Jensen on that touchdown play because he has been able to get to the second level so well from his guard position. Scrub and get that linebacker. Peyton Huslick numbers, sponsored by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by beef farmers and ranchers. He's had to throw a lot just because Missouri State has not been able to run the football. The and leading rusher averaging just 24 yards a game for the Bears. Yeah, Huslick's not running either as much as he used to a couple of years ago. Well, running through and running hard that time. On the reception is the backup running back DJ Frost, a redshirt freshman out of Blue Springs, picks up five yards to the 30. Yeah, Frost is a transfer, came from Air Force. Uh, back really kind of a home because his dad played at Missouri State, his sister was on the softball team, and I believe his mom ran cross country uh, at the, for the Bears too, so he just didn't know it when he first left, but now he's home. Yeah, family lineage there for certain for the Bears. Huslig, play action again, under pressure across the middle, and a dangerous pass, ball's incomplete. He wore a big 93 on his chest, too. Logan McCormick was had his hands up, was coming down on the quarterback. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Huslick will get the pass off, and then there's McCormick making him pay to release that thing. Over 5,000 career passing yards for Huslick, who came in from Garden City Community College, really worked his way up the ranks, won an NJCA national title there at Garden City. He's a three-year starter here with the Bears. Third and five. Bison bringing pressure. Huslick dropping it off. Boy, a nice catch made. Tight window there to throw the football. Jordan Murray, but he is a yard short of the first down to the 34-yard line. Yeah, Jordan Murray, you may remember him uh, from what he said. Last year he had a decent game against the Bison. He was on the uh, all-freshman team nationally from Hero Sports. So he's a kid they really like. Good pass catcher, but in terms of blocking, uh, the Bears have gotten little to none out of their tight end group, and that's another reason that they've struggled to run the ball, because if your tight end's not helping you in that rush game, uh, where are you gaining your advantage? Dave Steckel waited a little while to bring the punting unit on, but here comes Withrow to boot it away to Height. Another nice, high, deep kick. Boy, Withrow's done a nice job here in his first two punts as Height makes the fair catch at the 20-yard line. We step aside. 6-11 to go in the first quarter. North Dakota State with the football. By Time now for the Gate City Bank Fan Cam. Send us your home or watch party picks to fancamyourcam.com, and we'll show them in the fourth quarter. That is Fan Cam, your cam, and we'll show those in the fourth quarter. As poor as the Bears have been against the run, you'd think the Bison would line up in a running type style, but I tell you, the way they're, they're playing defense through the air, it's hard not to pass it. Boy, that was McClellan, I believe, flying in there to kind of bust that thing up as Kobe Johnson's first carry goes for a loss of one. Yeah. And he 
Bruce Egbin finished him off with the tackle. He does. Egbin 52 there. He's a senior. He's been around a while. Leads the team in tackles, making his 24th consecutive start for the Bears. McClellan, all MVC newcomer team, and he's been pretty disruptive off the edge here in the first couple drives. Delayed handoff again to Johnson. He gains about four yards to the 23 before he is taken down. That'll bring up third and seven. Tyler Lovelace coming in to make that stop for the Bears. And Lovelace is really, if you have to say, probably has been the biggest playmaker defensively. Fourth leading tackler, two fumble recoveries, two interceptions. Six, yep. And the issue right where it does not want to be, third and five plus, that's third and long. Delayed handoff. Did not fool the Bears as Dimitri Williams is able to get up to the 28, two yards short of a first down. Looked like there was some room there initially, but it was Angelo Garvin coming up to take down Williams two yards short. Nodak Insurance Company replay. When Williams gets the ball right here, it looks like it's going to be fairly easy to pick up the, the uh, first down. But Carson Schooning was not able to make the, uh, a big a push or a big enough screen there for Williams to get past him and get the two more that he needed. So it's fourth down. Wagner on to boot it away. Much better punt this time. Driving back the return man from Missouri State all the way to the 20 yard line. Let's pause for a quick message from Tobolt Seeds. Tobolt Seed offers the latest in seed cleaning technology to ensure your crop's full potential. Tobolt Seed also contracts, produces, and supplies the finest quality non-GMO soybeans to food manufacturers around the globe. Tobolt Seed, grow with us. 424 to go in the first quarter. Bears just nine yards so far on their first two drives. Riesling firing across the middle, and that is caught for a pickup of three, maybe four yards on the play. Lorenzo Thomas, big 6'5 wide receiver out of Jasper, Texas, makes his first catch. Jackson Hankey right there to take him down. Riesling, for the most part this year, has had to get the ball out of his hands real quick, and that means it's shorter pass patterns. If it's been a, a boot or a rollout, think maybe a longer pass because he's buying more time for his receivers down the field. That's been the tendency this year for Missouri State. One thing David Braun told us this week, the North Dakota State defensive coordinator, how much respect he has for this receiving core. Big, long kids that have made some difficult catches this season. Hughes look across the middle, and that is another catch. And the first first down for the Bears to the 33. DeMaurier Vick has his first catch. Bison looked like they brought some pressure up the middle. Nodak Insurance Company replay. The little slant's open because the linebacker drop isn't there because 52 Hanke was trying to get into the backfield. That was the right play against what the Bison had called. Pick in the motion. Handoff inside. We've not really seen the Bears even attempt a run, but actually it's a pretty good yardage here on first down to the 38-yard line. Pick up a five. First carry of the day for Myron Mason. Redshirt sophomore out of Denton, Texas. Has not had a lot of carries this season. It has been a struggle, the rushing game has. The Bears coming in just averaging 73 yards on the ground. They're giving away 164 yards on average on the ground so far this year. We haven't talked about it, but Missouri State has lost 12 straight games in the Dakotas. The last time Missouri State won a game in the Dakotas, north or south, 2009 against NDSU. Curry with the catch. And he's going to be close to another first down. I think about a yard short. Tyler Curry did that a lot last week against USD. He had nine catches. They went for 87 yards. But to get these big receivers, he's 6'3", over 200 pounds on the outside, giving him a chance to maybe break a tackle, almost pick up a first down there. Real representative of what the Bears have done throughout the course of the year. Use those big receivers on short pass patterns. Donovan Daniels checking in at tailback here on third and one. Somebody moved early for the Bears, one of the receivers. And that'll cost the Bears five. 
Was it Thomas, the guy in the wide? Full start. Court? Office number 81. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Actually got the tight end who was split out, I believe, on the high side. Right, LT? Yeah, that's Baker. Armin Baker. He's a sophomore. Let's take a look at the Missouri State offensive unit, sponsored by Shields. We talked about Hugh Slick Daniels as a transfer from Phoenix College, but four new pieces yeah, on the offensive line. O'Brien's the only one who's who's got any returning experience, really, the guy in the middle. Third and six here for Missouri State. Huslick dropping it off, and it is caught. Bick has a first down and runs out of bounds near midfield, and the Bears convert up to the 49-yard line. Real nice pass pattern. Watch it, Vic. You come in, he engages with Hanky, and then circles it back out to the outside after it was cleared out behind him. That was well done. So far, I like where Huslick's going with the ball. He's been finding some open receivers. Huslick so far, 7 of 10 for 38 yards. Been able to hang in there. Ball snap with one on the play cock, and it's Daniels wrapped up. And taken down by James Kayser after a gain of just one yard. Buying, building, or refinancing. Start with a free, immediate pre-approval from Gate City Bank and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCity.Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Well, you mentioned how Huslick through the air so far has up in that 70% range. And really, that's where you need to be when you're trying to kind of dink and dunk down, down the field. You can't be down under 60%, which is what he's been this year. Huslick's going to run it for the first time today. And Jackson Hanke able to sneak into the backfield. No gain. Now, two years ago, you may remember when the Bison played Huslick. He was running all over the place. As he has gotten older, he has run less and less. In fact, two years ago, he was their leading rusher. That'll take us to the end of the first quarter. The, the officials will have to move the ball about two feet <laughs> as we change sides. 8 nothing. North Dakota State after one. Here on the KBLY KFYR Bison Television Network. Dave Steckel's crew hanging in there through one quarter of play. Trailing just 8-0 after the first 15 minutes here at the Fargo Dome. Now we should mention, you see the Bears wearing number 20 on their helmets. That is honoring Richard Nelson, a tailback that was in this program. He was shot and killed in Las Vegas in January of 2017 as he was trying to intervene, attack on his sister. So that is why the Bears wear number 20 on their helmets to remember their fallen teammates. Third and eight for Huslick. Down he goes. Bison putting on the pressure, and he is taken down on the play. Spencer and that Wagey. is Spencer Wagey with the Superman. First sack on the season for Wagey. Well, we talked about this matchup on the pregame show. Wagey's coming from the outside. He beats the, I think it was a running back trying to chip him. Yeah, that wasn't too much of a problem. Gets on the inside there, and the Bison were all over him. Not much of a chance for Huslick to try to get that one because if Wagey somehow happened to miss, there were more green jerseyed up Bison right there. The Bear is at least able to pick up a couple first downs and turn the field around. Trevor Height back at his own 10. Bison coming after it. Withrow sending it down to Height. Makes the catch at the nine and will try to run away from the Bears. Boy, he's able to slip out of a few tackles, but is finally wrapped up on the play. Gain of about maybe four on that return as North Dakota State will be backed up for this drive. Lovelace was the guy that came in. It's going to be difficult for Height because he knows that the block was on, which means his blockers were trying uh, trying to, uh, to get the, the punt. And they're not back there trying to slow down the Bears. So despite getting past that first guy, there was a second level that Height couldn't get around. North Dakota State, 93 total yards offensively in that first quarter. 50 in the air, 43 on the ground. Oh, another flag comes out. False start, office number 75. Five-yard penalty, first down. Still in Raiden. 
Bisons. The Bison have not been very sharp here to start so far, LT. You have to say that? I would agree. Here we go, Bison. Yeah, those are, those are, I guess, just fundamental mistakes in terms of the timing and Braden's jumping the gun. AJ Blazik, offensive line coach. Oh, spinning out of a tackle and breaking free. Down the sideline goes Adam Cofield. Cofield still tiptoeing the sideline. And a big run for the junior from Missouri. Angelo Garba was the man that finally tracked him down. Modak Insurance Company replay, the Bison in 12 personnel. It's a balanced formation. Trey Lance calls out, let's go to the right. And that's the really the key there. And then the other thing, watch 17, Zach Mathis. He gets him about another 20 yards on the perimeter Rams, I believe is what Coach Entz called those guys this week. Blocking on the outside, Zach Mathis getting it done. 58 yards on the carry from Cofield. And now Ty Brooks looking to bounce it out. He is ridden down after a gain of five more by Lovelace. Um, Cofield's an interesting story only because he had committed to Missouri State and then the weekend before signing day <laughs> came on he a visit to here. North Dakota State and said, eh, maybe the Bison would be a better fit and it certainly worked out for the young man out of Missouri. Yeah, I believe Adam has said in the past that once he saw this environment and the way the Bison approached games and game day that he knew this is where I needed to go. Lance play action again. Stepping up, going downfield, one-on-one -on -one coverage to the end zone. Just out of the reach of Ben Ellison. Titus Wall, the safety on the coverage for Missouri State. At first, I thought Lance went away from, uh, from Ben, trying to wait for the wheel to open up. And then he looks and he sees that his big senior tight end has a couple of steps and tried to lay it over the top. North Dakota State, two of four on third down so far today. This will be third and five. Dimitri Williams, nothing. Boy, the Bears again doing a good job stacking things up. And the man that came in to make the stop, Jordan Wilkes, junior linebacker out of Florissant, Missouri. No gain on the play. Yeah, it's not very often you beat Zach Johnson to a leverage point, and I think Zach got beat on that particular play. Nodak Insurance Company replay, number 68 on the inside. You see? The, well, I guess Zach had a better block than I thought. It was, a, it was him coming in uh, from the second, uh, second level. The Bison leaving the offense on the field here, electing to go for it instead of a 46-yard field goal attempt for Griffin Crosa. Lance setting up the screen, and it was batted away. Ruling on the field. Nice job pass. defensively by down. McClellan. First and, 10, Missouri and the State. Bears hold. North Dakota State was three of four on fourth down until that play. I thought the handoff on the play before dictates that you're going to go for it on fourth down. Here's McClellan looking, kind of breaking up the screen. He saw it coming. He jumped up in there, gobbled the ball up, got it out of the air, and put his offense back on the field. Now they're having some discussion on the field, so... We will step aside for a quick message from Shields. This is NDSU on the previous play, keep your favorite Bison defense. gear at Shields. Hats, jerseys, hoodies, they've got the best selection of NDSU gear. And don't forget to check out the exclusive sideline apparel worn by our coaches. Thank you for your support and go Bison. So there was a flag down. I did not see it, but they said that one of the Missouri State defensive players lined up in the neutral zone. So that will give the Bison a first down. Uh, what a huge swing there. The Bears think their offense is going out there after making a fourth down stop. And I believe the, the, the penalty was thrown on Paris Jackson, one of the linebackers, they said, was in the neutral zone. 
And the one thing you don't want to give North Dakota State is second chances. Delayed handoff again to Cofield. Boy, the Bears doing a nice job plugging stuff up. The Bison have not been able to get movement. And it was Jackson and Embig. Egbim teaming up for the tackle. No gain. Those pinch points are coming quick from the defensive ends. Or the Bears are really on uh, some of those A-gap or inside runs are really crashing hard or, or slamming, slamming down with the defensive ends. Lance, a little trouble getting the snap. Oh, got a great block from Lukey. There goes Cofield to the corner. Down to the 10-yard line. Gain of about 15 yards, and the Bison will be set up first and goal. NDSU running against the strength of the formation. You see the tight end on the right side, but it gives you numbers on the outside, especially when you add the fullback into that run game. So that's where the Bison uh, are able to get one extra blocker against one less defender on the weak side or on the boundary side. Red zone scoring, number one in the nation for North Dakota State. The Bison have been very efficient in this part of the field. Yeah, 19 touchdowns in the red zone. Lance, plenty of time in the pocket. And running out of time and taken down back at the 10-yard line. Good coverage downfield and coming up with the sack was Kylan Washington, senior defensive tackle out of Fort Smith, Arkansas. Did he get back to the line of scrimmage? That might not be a sack. I believe the line of scrimmage was the 9 and oh, he was okay. taken down at the 10. Experience a better home loan with Gate City Bank. Whether you're buying, building, or refinancing, Gate City Bank provides locally Fischel's approved, financed, and serviced home loans. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Titus Wall just went off by himself to the tunnel. The starting one of the, the second leading tackler, number seven. Had his helmet off and he went back toward the locker room. Kobe Johnson, the motion man now in the slot. He's going to get the carry. Working off a block to the edge. Johnson down to the one, but a flag comes in back at the seven yard line. So this may be coming back. On the block in the slot is where I believe the penalty is going to happen. There is no foul for an illegal block below the waist. The block was judged to be legal. So they will pick the flag up, and the ball will remain at the one-yard line. Solid job by the officiating crew to get in, and basically, what did you see? What did you see? What did you see? Just off to the right of your screen was where the flag comes in. You can't engage down low. You got You got it. First initial contact has to be up high. Third and goal at the one. Babbage motioning to the high side. Lukey leading the way. Cofield into the end zone. Touchdown. the running back group Adam Cofield has been in the end zone more than any of them here's number six on your Nodak insurance company replay just following the Rams right in for six more points Cofield 81 yards now and a touchdown here in the first half Griffin Cross on for the extra point and he drills it still perfect the point after attempts this season, 15 0 North Dakota State, 9.44 to go in the first half from the Fargo Dome. Adam Cofield is in again. Sixth touchdown of the year. Bobcat scoring recap nine plays, 87 yards, and four and a half minutes. And Adam Cofield's 58 yard run to the 35 yard line. 
paired with the big third down penalty on Missouri State for lining up off sides. Allows the Bison to increase the lead to 15-0. Kara Wegner on for another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. It's going to be brought out. Great open field tackle. How about with Darsik? This young man continues to play excellent on special teams. Just a true freshman out of Illinois. Dawson Weber down there, though, first contact as well. So those two guys making the special teams play. And you know that insurance company replay. Well, there's Weber, 27, slowing him down. And with Arsic finishing him off. Jalen Henderson, the return man, the true freshman for Missouri State. The Bears are backed up to their own 16-yard line. And with Arsic, the true freshman from Naperville, Illinois. And that's the reason he's playing all the games with his, his uh, special team prowess. Hughes looked to throw again on the slant, and it's complete to Curry. Excuse me, that is DeMorie Bick making the catch. And a big gain for the Bears all the way to the 46. Gain of 30 on first down for the Bears. Here's a nice little slant to get inside position on Hendricks. James loses his balance a little bit. You get past the other safety to get all the way up to close to midfield. Those quick hitting plays, though, that's the type of thing that the Bears are looking for. And they squeeze that one in there and make it work. Huslick hanging in. He's going to throw it downfield. It is just out of the reach of Curry. And that ball had to be thrown a little bit earlier than Huslick wanted. Curry did not turn around until the ball was pretty much over his head. And it falls harmlessly incomplete. Let's pause for a quick message now from Shields. Hey, Bison fans, this is NDSU head coach Matt Entz. Get your favorite Bison gear at Shields. Hats, jerseys, hoodies, they've got the best selection of NDSU gear. And don't forget to check out the exclusive sideline apparel worn by our coaches. Thank you for your support, and go Bison. Can't say Huslick won't stand in there, though, because he stood in there under a big rush that last pass. Huslick quickly dropping it off to Donovan Daniels out of the backfield. <laughs> Ooh, big hit. Over on the sidelines by Jackson Hankey. Gain of four. Steps around. <laughs> and then gets squared right up to Hankey. Bears one of four on third down. This will be third and six from the 50. Huslick with time, might try to run for it. Across the 50 to the 45, down to the 40, or close to the 40, 42 yard line. A flag does come in at the 36. Two flags, actually. I think it's from the same infraction, though. Bears claiming the penalty is on North Dakota State, and this should move the chains for MSU. I'm gonna guess defensive holding. During the run, holding, defense number 52. 10 yards to the end of the run, results the first down. So that moves the ball all the way down to the 32-yard line as Jackson Hankey is called for the hold. Hankey was locked up with one of the guys in the slot trying to block him. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Right here is where we were looking. That's Jackson Hankey holding and turning one of the uh, tight ends. I believe that was Baker. Yep. James Hendricks and a little bit of a hit there on Huslick as he went to the turf. Best drive of the day so far for the Bears. A couple yards on that run for Myron Mason. Spencer Luigi, another tackle. Yeah, Jack Darnell, first guy there, the nose guard. Two yard gain, that's been Unfortunately for the Bears, that's their average. It's about what it is rushing the ball coming into the game, about a little over two yards of play. And you see Huslick ride the running back, that mesh point, most of the time it's a pass. Huslick setting up quickly, that ball is tipped up and falls incomplete. There were three green jerseys. Around that, Michael Tutsi, James Kayser. And number nine, I was thinking six. 
Marquise Bridges was trying to make a break on that ball, and if he was able to get there cleanly, he was thinking he, he had it going the other way. There's Bridges, sits down, he sees it to the tight end, and Baker's able to get a hand on it. Otherwise, that one's going the other direction in a big hurry. Third and eight for Missouri State from the 31. Buys and bring extra rushers. Flag comes out. Baker makes the catch, and he has enough for a first down. But again, two flags back at the 35, so this may be coming back. Logan McCormick actually made the tackle drop. Personal to the covers. foul, chop block, offense number 35, number 72. 15 yards in the previous spot, third down. Ooh, another big penalty on third down for the Bears. Would have been a first down, but a chop block will really back up Missouri State here on third down. Yeah, Derek Kohler, 72, he was the guy engaged, and then the running back comes in down low. So 72 is hit up high against Cox, and then the chop down low. Again, you go from the first down to now third and 23. Similar to what happened on the defensive side for the Bears instead of getting off the field. Three-man rush, buys and come. Huslick stepping up and down he goes for the second time. And once again, it's Spencer Luigi. Well, the Bears offensive line in a true pass pro just hasn't been able to hold up all year. They can't hold up against the Bison here either today. That's why a lot of the times on some deep pass patterns, you see Huslick rolling out to buy time. He can't get it. McCormick around one side. Here comes Wagey on the inside, taking him down. There's just no way the Bears can make a living in a true drop back stay in the pocket situation today. It's just not going to work. On well, the other huge part of that penalty, LT, is it knocked the Bears out of field goal range, too. So now having to punt is height. We'll let this one sail over his head. And it takes a favorable hop. And down by the Bears at about the nine yard line. Media, timeout. So NDSU backed up, but leading by 15. Six minutes to go until halftime here at the Fargo Dome. Time now for the Gate City Bank Fan Cam. Send us your home or watch party picks to fancamyourcam.com and we'll show them in the fourth quarter. Bison have not had the best field position in this game. Started the last drive at their own 13. This one from the nine. Run to the short side. Boy, bears are hitting out there. Flying through a hole again is Wilkes. Make the tackle, loss of one. That's a good job against an unbalanced, that pre-snap movement. You saw Radens go from his left tackle spot to his right tackle spot to get outside, and now you have three big guys, Johnson, Volson, uh, and also Radens on that right side, and the play gets nothing. In fact, loses probably a yard. I don't think that's gonna happen very often, but well done by the Bears. Lance throwing out, caught by Phoenix Sproles, puts on the break and eludes a man, and now down the sidelines. Hoo hoo, Sproles almost broke it. Still a gain of 22 to pick up a first down. Yeah, the touchdown saver from uh, Wall, Titus Wall. We did, he did go off earlier in the game, but on this Nodak Insurance Company replay, there's a lot of space when, when Phoenix first catches that. So he can make the move and get past Garbett, and then he also makes the other move to get past the, the cornerback able to get upfield and get NDSU out of that uh, field position hole. Lance quickly dropping it out to Cole Jacob. Or excuse me, that's a Curris who making the catch. No, it wasn't Jacob. Jacob did make his only his second catch of the season up to the 41. Good enough for another first down. Beautiful. It put in a perfect position. You see where Lance had that ball that was out in front. Jacobs is able to catch it with his hands, with his momentum going forward. So you can make a completion on that play, but usually don't get a first down unless you execute it as well as the Bison did right there.
Round game, Cofield. Taken down from behind, good pursuit from McClellan. Came all the way from the other side from his defensive end spot to make the tackle, pick up a three. That was a style of play that worked really well against UNI, a formation into the boundary, and then you pull your, your short side tackle as well. You pull the backside guard and the lead tackle, so that's a little bit of a different approach, but you're right, Brian, uh, the speed from the backside only allowed about three yards on that game. Tyler Roll, he spoke highly of McClellan. Lance, a clean pocket, has an open man again. And enough for another first down. Cofield has been a very reliable target out of the backfield, making the reception. Gate City Bank is proud to support the NDSU Bison. Show your Bison pride today with a free NDSU Gate City Bank debit card. Visit gatecity.bank slash mycard. Gate City Bank for a better way of life, member FDIC. But out in the flat, the Bison are getting a lot of room. You see Cofield. Who's around Cofield when he caught that ball? The answer is nobody. Play action again for Lance. Dropping it out off the hands of Hunter Lukey. And incomplete. Had a lot of room to maneuver that time. And that'll bring up second and ten. Let's go to Ryan Gellner on the sidelines for a first International Bank and Trust sideline report. Thank you, Brian. Ty Brooks came to the sideline limping off after that last play. He was evaluated by team staff. His left, I would call it ankle area, uh, they retaped it. Ty's now up and trying to run off that injury. And uh, I would assume they will re-evaluate that as we get closer to halftime, guys. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. Pitch to the outside here for the electric freshman Kobe Johnson, but the Bears all over it again. That was Darius Joseph coming up to help make that tackle along with Austin Henderson, the senior safety. Run fits have been an issue with the Bears this year, but on that particular play, you don't do it much better. There was no chance to get around to the outside or to find a cutback. Third and 10 for the Bison. Under three minutes to go here in the first half. Lance keeping the play alive across the middle. And that one is incomplete as he was looking for Sproles. Pretty good coverage on the play. Henderson again, the freshman from uh, Paris, Texas, knocking the ball away. Sproles just waiting, moving along with his quarterback who's flushed. Lance is trying to stay patient with the play, gets the ball there, but also Henderson makes the defensive play and wins that one. Big stop for Missouri State. Wegner. We'll try to pin the Bears deep, high end over end. Kendall Stewart had it bounce off his chest, but fortunately for him, out of bounds at the 13-yard line. 2.17 to go until halftime. 15-0 North Dakota State here at the Fargo Dome. Media, timeout. Fifteen nothing North Dakota State. Two minutes, 17 seconds until halftime. The Bears just eight rushing yards so far. We'll try to improve on that total. And will, as Daniels picks up two, Hanky another tackle for the Bison. Number 74, Will Mostart getting some reps now at defensive end. He's a true freshman from Lakeville. One of the players the Bison wanted to get a look at in game condition. He has a twin brother by the name of Eli, both Will and Eli committing to North Dakota State. That's Will right there playing that right defensive end spot. Lane Tucker in there at defensive tackle as well now. Jake Cava also in the game. Huslick across the middle, caught by Vic and then gang tackled by three different Bison players, about two yards short of a first down. DeMoria with a really nice grab because he was ping-ponged around a little bit after that catch. Multiple Bison there trying to hit him and dislodge the ball. That's been one of the more popular plays, though, in that slot position with Vic just kind of running a little slant. Those types of plays staying outside the linebacker, inside the safety. 
And Missouri State will call for a timeout. First timeout for the Bears here in half number one on this third and one. Start your Saturday off right. You're Dave Steckel, you really want to get this first down so that you don't give North Dakota State an opportunity to move down the field here with about a minute to go and three timeouts. If you're thinking to yourself, Steckel, how do I know that last name? Wasn't there Steckel that was the head coach of the Vikings? You're like, yes, there was, and that's his older brother. Most Viking fans would not think fondly of the Steckel years <laughs> in Minnesota, but. Wins have been hard to come by here for Dave. 13 and 36, he's in his fifth year. Real good start last year. The Bears were three and one at one point. Beasley in the pistol. Cox, as this one is floated over the top, and it's complete, going up high to make the reception was Jordan Murray, second catch of the day, and that moves the sticks to the 32. He's just taking a lot of snaps. He's seen a lot. Here comes 42 on a pressure from the uh, from the edge, and he goes right to where Cox was. Houston can cross the middle, and this one is jarred loose. Jabril Cox putting the hit on Vic, incomplete. Attempt to number 16, Mario Vic is incomplete. Brings up second and 10 for the Bears. League of 11 of 17 for 88 yards here in the first half. Oh, that pass complete. Thomas making the reception. James Hendricks tried to undercut that pass. But Thomas able to get down inside Bison territory to the 47-yard line. Still time and a couple timeouts to work with here for the Bears. Hendricks is going to gamble, and he misses. Right there, they split it get good yardage. Huesley quickly to work. Flushed out. Now he's going to take off and run, and run out of bounds at the 45, chased up by Marquise Bridges after a gain of two. Yeah, yards not the premium there, but Huslick knows he needs to try to get that clock stopped, and he does at 37 seconds. Huslick, smart guy, knows he, he's planning to be a doctor. He has a 397 GPA, and, and he'll be uh, heading to medical school. Second in the Missouri Valley in passing yardage per game, nearly 242 yards per contest for the senior out of Andover, Kansas. Huslick hanging in there again, and it was almost intercepted by Hendricks at the 43. Well, Hendricks has been beat a couple of times. Well, it's not 100% his fault, but that position, that spot in the slot has been beat a few times, and here's Hendricks' really good look on the Nodak Insurance Company replay. Jumps around the receiver, tries to get both hands on that ball to corral it in. And had he been able to make that catch, he may have taken it back. Third and eight of course, from the 45. James knows what it's like to intercept the football. He's done it 11 times in his career here. The Bears will burn their second time out here on third and eight. Take another look at it and pass breakups. Well, there's been a bunch of them. Been a bunch of them. Over 40 now this season for North Dakota State. There's the pass back to that slot, a little stick route run by the slot man Vic. And if. If there is a frustration in that number, it's that the Bison feel that they should have more interceptions this year than they actually have because they have been around the ball a lot and breaking up a number of passes. Now North, Dak North Dakota State just 12 points per game allowed, which is third best in the FCS. Just seven touchdowns have gone against the Bison here through what, the first six and a half games now. Huslig is going to air it out, and that one is way out of the reach of his intended target, Curry. Well defended on the play by Josh Hayes, and that will bring up fourth down. You're right on the seven total touchdowns, but you have to remember one of those was the scoop and score against uh, uh, that Butler did 
at target field. So really the defense has only allowed teams to get in the end zone six times in six games. That's pretty darn impressive. Now Dave Stenkel will run a run on the punting unit as we're under 30 seconds to go. Coming into this game, Missouri State was minus 21 in the punting department, meaning they have punted 21 more times than their opponents. And that one shanked off to the side. We'll see where they mark it. It should be outside the 20 yard line somewhere. And keep going, keep going right there. 25 yard line with 23 seconds left. NDSU again came hard. The Bison really, it, it looks like, feel like they can block one of those punts. And code green, as you see on Coach Entz's uh, sweatshirt there, that's one of the themes today. And the green on green with the green helmets. Watson and Sproles, two receivers. I mean, it's the trees, Bull. There's still some green on the trees, aren't there? Very little. Lance dropping back, firing on the sideline. Boy, great catch by Dimitri Williams. He gets to the 50. And Matt Entz quickly calls for his first timeout with 15 seconds to go. Timeout, North Dakota State. Boy, Williams had to climb up the ladder. The Tremendous reception. Timeout. Well, he spent most of his games as a wide receiver. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Williams, again, patient. This isn't the first look, I don't think, for Lance. It wasn't. He checks off. Does a really good job of keeping his shoulders squared to the ball, rotating, high pointing it, coming down. You gotta remember that Williams redshirted last year with the intent of moving to running back because his three previous seasons he spent in the Bison uniform as a wide receiver. Williams coming back, got injured in the second game of the season and did not play for about a month. Got in on just a couple of plays last week to get his feet wet and we've seen more reps here for the senior. Still two timeouts for the Bison in 15 seconds, so at least a couple of plays to try to get in the field goal range for Krosa. Lance flushed out, drops it off to Williams again. And Matt Entz will burn his second timeout. Not much of a pickup there timeout, on that play. North Dakota State. Gain the second close to seven. 30 second timeout. And Dimitri was trying to get out but his forward progress was stopped at that point, which is why the clock was still moving and not stopped as he goes uh, out of bounds. So good job by the defender. And with Lance keeping the play alive, that burned some time off. Only six seconds left now until halftime. It's Joseph again, the corner. Well, the players have talked about how they feel like the culture at Missouri State is better over the last few years with Dave Steffel coming in. It just has not translated to more wins on the field, LT. No, it hasn't. And this is not a rookie team either. I mean, you've got to take Sanders out now, but I mean, this is a team, if you take Sanders out, has six returning starters on both sides of the ball. I mean, it's, it's not that they're all rookies and young and getting banged around and beat up. Probably need about 15 yards here to get in Kroos' range unless the Bison just want to take a shot into the end zone. And it is blown dead, and Missouri State will snap. call for its Charge final timeout. timeout. Missouri State. That's our third and final timeout of the half. Please reset the game clock to six seconds. Six seconds. Thank you. Well, the Bison do have 259 yards of total offense here in the first half. Doesn't seem like it, does it? <laughs> Here's your officiating crew from the Missouri Valley. Trey Lance's numbers in this first half, 9 of 14 for 127 yards. Does have a rushing touchdown. Lance all of last week threw just 18 passes, 145 yards and three scores against Northern Iowa. Of course, the Bison racking up nearly 350 yards on the ground. I think it's real interesting you see Missouri State playing press coverage across the board. 
Lance looking to escape. Able to do so, but he's got a long way to go. To the 30. Lance putting the shoulder down, pushed out of bounds, and that will end the first half with the Bison leading by 15. Ryan Gellner will catch a word here with North Dakota State head coach Matt Entz. Matt, 270 yards of total offense. Uh, probably doesn't feel that way just because the scoreboard's not lit up, but you're, you're assess the first half. I think there's plenty of things that we need to do better in the second half. Third down efficiency, both sides of the football. Uh, we're letting them extend plays with penalties, uh, not doing a great job in coverage, returning some people loose. So there, there's some things we can correct and play better for sure. How do you find more energy? That's on, this, that's on the players at this point. You know, they, you know, we, need, we need to lean on our seniors a little bit. Those guys need to get them cranked up. Good luck. Thanks. Back to you guys. Well, North Dakota State leading 15 nothing here as the Bison look to move to 7-0 and on this season. But the Bears hanging in there after the first two quarters of play here in Fargo. Stay tuned. The Proceed Halftime Report comes up next. Beth Hool, Kyle Emanuel, and Alex Egan standing by to take a look at the first half highlights, some analysis, and also a look around the Missouri Valley. You're watching the KBOI Camp Boy, our Bison Television Network. Proceed halftime reports. Brian Sean Lee Timmerman back with you. Ryan Gellner on the sidelines had a chance to catch up with Missouri State head coach Dave Steckel. Coach, you've pretty much been able to keep them out of the end zone. Do you have to be happy with your defense so far? So far, but we got to quit giving up so many big plays and we got to do a better job of leveraging the ball and tackling. Offensively, then you've got to get into the end zone. How do you do that the second half? We got to stop sustaining. We got to continue to sustain our drives. You know, we're hurting ourselves with penalties and then all of a sudden penalty pushes back and we're getting up a sack. So we got to protect the quarterback and we got to get rid of our penalties. Appreciate the time. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Guys, back upstairs. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. And the one thing you have to say about Missouri State throughout those two quarters in the first half is the effort was there on both oh, sides absolutely. of the ball. They played hard on both sides for every minute they were out there. And I think uh, Coach has to be happy with the fact that he got NDSU off the field four different times in those seven possessions. So I thought the biggest stat, believe it or not, was the number of porn, uh, punts that Garrett Wagner had. He punted four times, so, so uh, the Bears got the Bison off the field three out of seven times. NDSU on the other side to go what uh, Coach Steck was talking about there. It was three uh, and eight, three of eight, I should say, on third downs for his team offensively. So neither coach is going to be happy with that department. Yeah, a big reason, I think, too, for that third down efficiency or lack thereof for North Dakota State is not a lot of efficiency first on first down. down. They've yep. had a lot of plays that have gone for no yardage or just a couple of yards and been a lot of third and longs. And North Dakota State, again, when you look at the total yards, 283 total yards, 156 on the ground, 58 of those came on the one run by Cofield, and 21 more came on the touchdown run by Trey Lance. And there's a look at Garrett Malstrom. You see number 39 right there in the middle of your screen. And the big fullback there has been a big part of North Dakota State's successes. He leads the way in a lot of those power formation sets, and he injured a knee at practice this week, and his timetable for return is still questionable. It could be close to a month-ish. So Hunter Lukey getting extended reps, and also Austin Avery may get an opportunity here to play some fullback as well today. Missouri State will get the football first. I actually thought the Bison might rotate, you know, how they motion tight ends back into the backfield into that fullback type position thought they might do more of that in the first half and they really didn't We're set for the second half of play Jacquez Carter back deep once again for Missouri State Garrett Wegner will do the honors here for the Bison Jalen Henderson the true freshman also back for Missouri State. And Wagner did a nice job here of drilling this one five yards deep. And Carter will call for the touchback. And Missouri State will start at the 25 yard line. North Dakota State was penalized four times. Offside. And now five times. Five yard penalty from the succeeding spot. First down. So five penalties now in North Dakota State for 30 yards. The Bears whistled for three penalties 
425. And the Bison really wanted to come in today, play sharp, play efficient, play fast. And I don't know that we saw a lot of that in the first half. And there's another offside on a kickoff is an, an indication of how uh, fundamentally things aren't going as well as NDSU would have liked. But you're still up 15 to nothing. Your, your defense is pitching a shutout. Huesley dropping it off. Oh, buys it all over. Hanky finished it off, but Jabril Cox was the guy that really forced the issue, getting penetration into the backfield. Yeah, Vic was trying to get a block in that slot, and it was not going to work against number 42. Hughes Liga will look to the sideline. 21st pass attempts of the afternoon for Peyton Huslick. Play clock down to five. Low snap. Huslig throwing on target. Thomas taken down immediately by Marquise Bridges. And that will bring up third and three as he gets to the 37-yard line. I mean, he made it look easy, but that's not the easiest thing to do when that snap is fired back down below your knees, down by your shins to be able to pick up that ball, get your hands on the laces, and then still get it out in time. Well, Matt Ensa talked about with Ryan Gellner before going into the locker room the importance of the seniors got to create their own energy here. They, they got to they got to bring it a little bit. And to be honest with you, the atmosphere today in the building is Slug not what it normally sluggish. is. Yeah, it's just been sluggish. Bison bring pressure. Huesling across the middle, in and out of the hands of Demorier Vick. Let's go to Ryan Geller, who is standing by with the new women's basketball coach at North Dakota State, Jory Collins. Yeah, guys, and Jory is one of those guys that's brought a ton of energy into that women's basketball locker room. Uh, you've started practice. You're off and running. How are things going so far? It's going great. Uh, couldn't ask for more from our players right now. Um, just buying in and listening and wanting to be coached. Uh, the energy's been great every day. Uh, we're just excited about getting better. North Dakota State women's basketball with the, the new face. Uh, it'll be a new feel as well, won't it? It is. You know, uh, we're trying to implement some things and kind of change the culture a little bit and uh, just change our mentality. And so those are things we're working on on a daily basis. And, and like I said, it's happening. It, it, you know, you always want to have it a little faster than it is, but uh, we're making the progress that we need to. And you simply want people to give you a shot, right? Come on out, check these women out. The calendar flips in November, and you guys are off and running. Yeah, you know, we've had, there's a change here, that, and, and we're excited about it. Uh, we know there's a big fan base here. Obviously, where we're at today and, and the support that NDSU gets. Come check us out. Come watch us play. Uh, you know, we're going to put a product out there that's fun to watch and it's entertaining. Look forward to it. November 1st, uh, the season kicks off for the next mission game. Gets going for real on November 6th, so it's right around the corner. Best of luck this year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jory. Back upstairs, guys. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. Thank you, Coach Collins. And Phoenix Sproles with a reception for nine yards on first down. We'll bring up second and short. Let's take a look at the numbers on Trey Lance, the redshirt freshman out of Marshall, Minnesota, sponsored by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by Beef Farmers and Ranchers. 127 yards through the air, also 44 rushing yards and a touchdown in that first half. Of his nine, fairly spread out, four different receivers combined to make six. The long play to Elson was 27 yards. Two in the backfield here on second and one, and I'll Lance across the middle overshooting Kobe Johnson, and had he hit Johnson, that was a touchdown. Johnson matched up against Eggman, the linebacker. That's the matchup the Bison wanted. They take a shot here, but this pass is just fired a little bit too low, and Johnson doesn't have uh, enough opportunity to go up and get it. I think if uh, Lance has that one back, he'll put a little bit of air under it and see if he could get Kobe to run under it because there was no middle deep safety. Third and one. North Dakota State three of seven on third down in the first half. Oh, and somebody moved early. Sixth penalty on North Dakota State, and I think they're going to get Zach Close Johnson start. again. Offense number 68, five-yard penalty, third down. As he rocked out of his stance, 
buying, building, or refinancing. Start with a free immediate pre-approval from Gate City Bank and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCity.Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Third and one will become third and six. Lance Sproles makes the reception, trying to reach out across to get the first down, and I think he's still going to be spotted about a half yard short, maybe a full yard. The white hat showed first down, and then uh, the field judge, or the line judge on the high side blew his whistle and said, no, we're short. short on the line to gain, fourth down. Lines been marked him about a yard short, not quite a full yard. He just needs to get to the 38. <laughs> we better take a look at this one, guys. From the, <laughs> the white hat left his mic on. He said, "Guys, we better take a look at this one." <laughs> so we all know what he's thinking. Now he's asking the uh, the booth off to our left to look at the replay. I'm with you, Brian. I thought when the play happened, I thought he was marked short. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Lance looking left. He's going to throw left to Sproles. Where is that forward progress? He tried to reach the ball across the yard marker and then pulled it back. Hard to tell right there. But his body comes down right on. Well, if he gets the that, I thought it was on the 32. He needs to get the 33. I think he, I don't think, I think it's just fourth down. Well, certainly those two angles don't give us a definitive look of whether or not he reached the 33. So that will likely remain and stand. If, you, if you're a goal or your intent is to be a, a football coach or especially a head coach somewhere down the line, don't you think you should have taken debate classes or something like that when you were going through school? I, th I think it's right. I think it is fourth and one. Decision has been made upstairs. And we'll learn about it. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. The ball carrier was short of the line of the game. Fourth down. And Matt Entz will bring out the punting unit here. Wagner today has hit one long one, averaging about 47 yards a kick. Well, the Bison are really spreading things out here on this formation. And Wagner will send it down. And a fair catch called for and made at the 27. We will step aside. Each team has had the ball Media, once. Time out. And we've had a couple punts. Time now for the Gate City Bank Fan Cam. Send us your home or watch party picks to Fan Cam Your Cam, and we'll show them in the fourth quarter. That is FanCamYourCam.com. Still a little bit of time here to get those picks in for the fourth quarter. Fourth, no, put that young man to sleep. Start of this second half, couple of punts. Each team has had the ball once, and Missouri State will start from about the 28-yard line. Huslick running away from Cavan. Going to launch it downfield for Thomas. Bridges went up and took it away. Interception, I believe. No, now incomplete. it's going to be incomplete. Second down. Yeah, when Bridges hit the turf, the ball comes out. Otherwise, I think he had it called spot on, Brian. Looked like he ripped that ball away, had it, comes down, not able to control it, incomplete. Nodak Insurance Company replay the tail end of this. There's Cava. Usually like getting pretty good downfield going away from his throw, or throwing arm, I should say. Oh, he never did control it, did he? Uh, good job by Thomas, actually, keeping his hand in there to rip that thing away. And Bridges giving up about five inches to Thomas. Went up and high-pointed po high it. 
Missouri State has really not attempted to run the football very much. Three-yard pickup there on second down. Let's take a look at the numbers on Peyton Hughesley, sponsored by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by Beef Farmers and Ranchers. 109 passing yards in the first half, now 116. Well, the follow-up on your point, I think that's the 12. The Bears only had 12 rushing yards in the first half, so they're still at 12. Third and seven. Huslig to Thomas. Tried to come back and get it, but just out of his reach. Josh Hayes on the coverage, and a three and out here for the Bears. Sailed just a little bit out of Huslick's hand. Been a series of punts here in in the third. Oh, he dropped it, and now it's just going to be <laughs> booted out of bounds. And North Dakota State will get great field position as Withrow looked like he had him, and just slipped out of his hands as he was about to kick it away, and then hastily did what he could to at least get some field position back. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Nothing wrong with the snap. A little adjustment. The ball comes out. And then NDSU was going for punt block a lot in that first half. So this time they have a return called. And it's a whoops. And Cofield's like, I wasn't really trying, but I almost got a punt block there. This unit needs to establish a little something, don't they? Dimitri Williams in the I formation with Lukey in front of him. Williams has some daylight this time. And one of the better runs for North Dakota State up the middle. Gain of 12 to the 43-yard line of Missouri State. Williams still down. Official timeout for an offensive injury. Power play. Bison executed very well right up through the A-game. Oh, no, that's Zach Mathis trying to make a block. Media. Timeout. And we will step aside here as they look at Mathis. 11.24 to go in the third quarter. North Dakota State with the football inside Missouri State territory when we come back. And Zach Mathis, big tall wide receiver out of Tampa, Florida, helped off the field. And here's a look at what happened. Bang knees as he was coming across the middle. And unfortunately, his foot was planted. planted. You can see right there, it yeah. bends. And they will likely do further testing to see. When that right foot is planted, and you see that knee buckle, that is generally a bad sign. A young man that has made a lot of strides from his true freshman to his redshirt freshman season. Had catches in each of the first four games for North Dakota State. Had that 41-yarder downfield against UND. That was a big play in that game. And we saw, too, LT, earlier in this game, how well he is he blocking on the perimeter. You wouldn't think of that, his, you know, for a kid that's 6'6", and he's fairly lengthy, but he goes down and blocks. Boy, handoff, and Missouri State again all over it. Cofield taken down on the play by Angelo Garbett after a loss of three. So third and 12 coming up. Garbett, a transfer from Iowa. Third leading tackler on the team was 2018 Missouri Valley honorable mention, was second team in 2017. And this linebacker, we have to say, is probably the most experienced group on the team in terms of guys that have played. It is, and they've been making plays all over the field, all three of them. I mean, Loveless, especially early in the game, was, was on it. Lance getting it out. Caught by Williams, got some great blocking, and Williams down the sidelines. Taken down at the nine-yard line. Boy, saving a touchdown that time for Missouri State was the safety Cam Carter. But the Bison converts 
An explosive play on third and 12. Waiting for an explosive Personal play foul. to happen. Tripping. Offense number one. Uh -oh. 15 yards. Wait penalty a minute. The spot of the foul. Uh, as we look third at down. this replay, there is going to be a call against Christian Watson Christian there. Watson. Yep. A clip. Well, it looked like he reached up and grabbed the guy's leg as he was trying to run away. And that's a no-no. And that is a personal foul for tripping. I was just about to say that's the type of play the Bison and the fans and everyone and in this building, most everyone anyway, was waiting to kind of happen. And then it didn't. So now third and 20 instead of first and goal at the nine. Five receivers in the formation here for Trey Lance. Lance flushed, will try to get out of trouble and can't do so. Good job on the pursuit that time from Kevin Ellis as another flag comes in. I think, you'd, uh, I think you would obviously decline the holding play that's uh, coming here, but the Bears just rushing four and getting a pretty good rush. I, you, I like the explosiveness that McClellan has coming off the ball. I'm curious to see who this is going against. It may go against Missouri State for a hold. Holding defense number 52. Ah. Ten yards from the end of the run. First. Third down. I was going to say first down, but that's NFL rules. <laughs> so Eggman called for the penalty, and that'll move the ball now inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Lance, a clean pocket, now going to take off and run. Gets away from McClellan across the 35, down to the 32, and enough for a first down. Coming into this game, the second leading ground gainer for NDSU, Lance. Obviously, this is not a quarterback run, but boy, he has to do some pretty good work, tough work, hard last couple of yards to pick up the first down. Big, strong kid, though. We know that. 6'3", about 220, 225. Well, Dave Steckel singing his praises this week <laughs> in his press conference. said, this kid's unbelievable. Lance quickly out to Sproles, working off of a block from Watson. And taken on, down on the play by Jacquez Carter, and that should be enough for another North Dakota State first down to the 22. I actually wrote down that quote from that you're talking about from Steckel, and Dave said, I think... Wentz was pretty good, and he wiped my brow. We didn't have to go against him. Then he said Easton Stick was really good, and I don't want to get Stick mad at me, but this kid is very impressive. <laughs> Lance play action, dropping it off. Catch made there by Lupke. He's got another Bison first down, pick up of 12 to the 10-yard line before he is cut down on the play by Austin Henderson. And Nash Jensen is the protection. Nodak Insurance Company replay, 66 pulls, just in case somebody is there to keep his quarterback free. Fullback runs through the formation, out into the flat, picks up the first. Well, Luke, he carried the ball a lot in high school. I mean, a lot. Over 90 career touchdowns. Stretch play to the outside. Oh, boy, not a lot of room this time for Cofield. Missouri State continues to string things out in a loss of three yards as the Bears converge to make the tackle. Let's pause now for a quick message from the Bank of North Dakota. My plan was to get a degree in engineering. And with the help of a student loan from Bank of North Dakota, I did. If you want to build something solid, you need a plan. Bank of North Dakota, helping you achieve more. Second goal from the 13. Lance with time. Everything covered up back in the end zone, looking for Babbage, but well out of his reach. We'll bring up third and goal. 
three initial receivers in the route tree and then Babbage is the drag guy deep. And all four receivers covered very well. Lance just kind of rolling, rolling, looking for the coverage to break down. It didn't. Lance firing to the corner. It is just out of the reach. And he was looking for the true freshman, Braylon Henderson, who's getting an opportunity to play today for the first time. Young man they recruited out of Texas, Plano East High School, not too far from the Frisco area where North Dakota State has played a lot over the years. Henderson in the slot. Safety comes over to pick him up. Covered on the play. And we'll bring on Griffin Crosa, 31 yard field goal attempt. Down, it is up, and it is hooked to the left. No good. And the Bears get a stop. The Bison don't get any points. And it's still 15 to nothing, 6.47 to go in the third quarter on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. There's a look at the redshirt freshman wide receiver, Zach Mathis out of Tampa, Florida. Ryan Gellner has a first international Mac and Trust sideline update. Yeah, guys, and as you figured, it is not good news for Zach Mathis. It is a left knee injury, and he will have his MRI next week, and that's really, guys, where you can tell the severity of that injury. If it was an injury where he could possibly play in a week or two, they would do that MRI tonight. They won't do that MRI until next week. Guys. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. And, oh, tough break there. For Pass the interference. For pressure. Defense number 14. 15 yard penalties from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And that will go against Josh Hayes on the pass interference. Huslig having plenty of time to set up, looking for his big target, Lorenzo Thomas. And the ball was thrown about four or five yards inbounds, and the those two were running right along the edge. So apparently, Hayes just didn't allow the receiver an opportunity to try to come back to that ball. Eight penalties, 65 yards on North Dakota State today. Inside handoff. Well played there by Cole Karch coming off his block, making the stop on Donovan Daniels for no gain. Offensive and defensive line play, so much of it is done with your handwork and how you what you have to do to keep your hands free. And that's what Karch did on that play. He just was able to not give up outside leverage, keep his hands free, and make the tackle, even though he was engaged with a blocker. Huslick going to take a shot again for Curry. And that ball thrown out of bounds. Marquise Bridges in pretty tight coverage will bring up third and ten. The Bears have had some slants and some short passes that worked in the first half. And to be honest, I don't mind what they're doing here. Take some outside cracks, go some 50-50 balls. You have big tight, or you got big wide receivers. 6-3, 6-3, 6-5. Go ahead. Take a crack downfield. Last play got you a penalty and picked up a first down. I mean, they watched the film from last week against Northern Iowa. You and I had some success doing that against the North Dakota State Corners. Hugh Slick. Behind his intended target, is that ball still live? No. Was looking for Daniels, and Huesley quickly tried to get it out to him, but way off target. And that'll bring up fourth and ten. Yeah, Daniels was the motion man. I was looking through some numbers before the game, and just to give you an idea of, of how the running game has not worked this season. Daniels has been the most productive runner in a single game against Western with 33 yards on the ground. That's it. Bison are bringing pressure again. Oh boy, it was Jackson Brown almost getting in there to make a play on that ball as Trevor Height calls for the fair catch at the 20 yard line. Experience a better home loan with Gate City Bank. Whether you're buying, building, or refinancing, Gate City Bank provides locally approved, financed, and serviced home loans. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC 
equal housing lender. This campaign can enhance every element of the NDSU student educational experience. This is the vision to lift up all of NDSU. The region Leanne Sermon on this crew, female official. As Lance brings back offense back out, and A.J. Blazik to see his Rams try to establish this ground game a little more here in the second half. Yeah, you keep waiting for it to happen, and the Bears are not letting it happen. Lance dropping it off. Babbage left all alone, and he will plow ahead and pick up a first down to the 36-yard line as Eggbim makes the tackle. Both Williams and Gindorf running deeper patterns, so you have to honor the deep side. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Just you set up Babbage in that soft little zone underneath where the two guys are, are back there deeper, and it's an easy read for Lance, the quarterback. Boy, again, Eggman right in the hole, waiting for the tailback, and then Lovelace finished off Dimitri Williams for no gain. The type of play I don't think the Bison have ran a bunch this year that looked like a counter. You saw motion go through the backfield to the wide side of the field, and then you try to pull a pull a guard to get right back in it. So this little counter play, Bears didn't bite. Eggman, as you mentioned, uh, Brian, does what a linebacker is supposed to do, fill that hole and make a play. Play action for Lance. Fires high and going up and making the catch was Christian Watson. Wow. Of course, Watson made the beauty in the back of the end zone last week. Look at how far he comes back. Makes his break at the 46. Comes back five yards to catch the ball, get that toe down, and pick up the first down. Well, he went way up to make that catch. Enough for a first down to the 48. Well, he's 6'3 to begin with, too. And so you talk about a catch radius, your ability where to catch a ball in a big in a window. He opens that window up for his quarterback a little bit with that athletic ability. Quarterback design run for Lance. Boy. Eggbim again has been all over the field. No gain. You see, now that's more than I thought. I'm looking at what the Bison yards per rush have been today, and it's 6.3. Well, it's 0.0, .0 on this play. Eggman stays squared up. Textbook tackle. Oh, Lance was hit by his own man. A little bit late delivering it to Phoenix Sproles. Phoenix able to spin out of a couple of tackles, but, fi but finally he is taken down for good by Lovelace at the 49, gain of a couple. So another third and long for North yeah. Dakota State. They've the Bison have found themselves in this position a lot, LT. And he issued just four of 10 on third down. And again, coming into this game, as the number five third down efficient team in the country. Missouri State blitz. bringing a blitz. Lance well out of the reach of Capuris on the sideline and caught by I think the backup quarterback over on the sideline for Missouri State. Lance kind of holding his hand. I don't know if he's on his follow through if he hit a helmet or hit somebody. But he threw that ball out of came out of contact and had and was was holding his hand. So I think his follow through guessing by his reaction that he hit someone, but he's still looking at that right hand. Let Nodak Insurance Company replay, follow through. Yep, helmet. Wegner on for another boot. We'll try to pin the Bears deep. Fair catch called for and made right at the 10 yard line. So well done again by Wegner as the fair catch is made by Kendall Stewart with 2.38 to go in the third quarter. Kind of see the offensive unit sitting over there with scowls on their face. I don't think they're very pleased with their effort across the board. They shouldn't be. Um, the fact that 
I mean, the, the yards look good, that type of thing. Bison are close to 400 yards, but the 15 is still only two touchdowns. You go back to that one big play scenario. Hey, the Bears are one big play from being right in this thing. Design run for Huslick. He is taken down after a pickup of about four by Karch. Kays are also in there for North Dakota State. Kays are playing linebacker, which he has done quite a few times this year. He's down inside the box right now. Every time I see Cole Karch, he's got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in his hand. <laughs> Only one? Well, because he, has he needs to, eat to about, keep his weight up. He goes, I have to work so hard to keep my weight up during the season at 270 pounds. Again, he was brought in here to really be a defensive end, and then they bulked him up. He's done a good job moving inside over his Bison career. Huslig. Oh, I just threw it away. Now, wait a minute. And they're going to say incomplete. Now a flag comes out, and I think this might be grounding on Huslig. He just kind of spiked that into the turf. But, you know, I thought Lorenzo Thomas was... Close Intentional play, grounding, no. offense number 15. Loss of down at the spot of the foul, third down. Awesome. Let's see where, we see number four where Wagey runs into him. Not that, not that Thomas was looking to make a catch. I don't think he was that far away, it doesn't matter. Well, Huesley came in the second half with 109 passing yards. He only has seven here in the third quarter. Dave Steckel giving the official on that side an earful. Third and real long, 17 for the Bears. Bears got to go quickly. Play clock is down to four. And they will just hand it off here. A safe call, certainly. As Mason darts up inside and gets a few yards back, and that'll bring up fourth and long. Yeah, the sophomore from Park River had that play lined up from the get-go. Saw the mesh, read the run. Just trying to buy the punter a few extra yards. And Withrow out once again. We've had a punting contest here in this third quarter. Yeah, that's fun, isn't it? If you like punting. <laughs> <laughs> Height from the 48 has some room to maneuver. Flag comes in as he gets inside Missouri State territory and finally comes to a fall at the 42. I think it was, I think it's going to be on Trey Fort trying to make a block on the outside. Punts and penalties. What's that total number today? Ugly. During the return, illegal block in the back, return team. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first out. Now, he didn't say number seven, but I think it's on number seven. When I was a kid, Lindsey Nelson used to voice over Notre Dame highlights and to help speed through the game. He would say, after, ser after a series of punts, we moved to further action in the third quarter. We're about there, huh? Yep. We're almost to the fourth quarter, and we've had a series of punts. Lamps just dumping it off to Williams, and Eggbim again, loss of two. Boy, Eggbim has been all over the place here in this third quarter. Well, you don't lead the team in tackles by accident. And I think we're seeing why this senior is leading this team in tackles. Only at 12 last week against South Dakota, 15 the week before against Western Illinois. I mean, in coming in, just to give you an example of how much, coming into this game, he had 14 more tackles than the guy who was second on the list. So he's all over the place, and he's been impressive today. Stretch play to the outside. Decent push there that time as Cofield was able to get across the 40 yard line to the 41, but another third and long for North Dakota State coming up and wouldn't you know it, it's Eggbim again. Yeah. Do you want the, okay, now we're gonna start the clock. I was thought it was out of bounds. At least we get the clock started and get this quarter over with. <laughs> 
And this third quarter will mercifully come to an end. Same score we started with after halftime. 15-0 North Dakota State. That's the end of the third quarter. Neither team able to get anything really going on the offensive end. We'll be back with the final 15 from Fargo. It's 15-0 Bison on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. It's about the same puzzled look everybody in this place has right now. 15-0 <laughs> North Dakota State as we get set for the start of the fourth quarter. Bison with a third and seven coming up from their own 41-yard line. Penalties. Oh, they've been big for North Dakota State in critical spots, too. Yeah. Well, we talked about penalties and punts. The Bison combined 15. Missouri State, 14. Lance is going to take off and run with it. And he dives ahead to the 48, and that is the line to gain that he needed. So that should be enough for a first down. Yep, this will move him. Third and long. The Bison keep it in the hands of their strong running quarterback and get a good push right up the gut. Lance now 62 rushing yards on the day. Second only to Adam Cofield's 84. And Cofield had 58 of those on that one run. Little flip to the outside for Johnson. Boy, more good pursuit. Forcing the issue that time for Missouri State was Carter coming off his block and forcing Johnson out of bounds after a loss of a couple. And the Bison are thinking they're going to get that one key blocker out there, but Jacquez Carter, with his speed, read it and uh, basically sprinted to, to the edge, to the corner. Of course, it's the short side of the field, less time to try to get up that field, but really good hustle there by the defensive back to blow that play up before it started. Lance quickly fires it out to Sproles. He's able to lunge ahead after the initial stop there from Garbutt. We'll bring up third and eight. Nodak Insurance Company replay, isolation. Now the key here is you make the catch and you're thinking that you're going to beat the first tackler. Well, Garbutt was able to come down, stay on the legs of Sproles and wait for his help. So there were some yards to have if Sproles can get through there, but he couldn't. Lance out to Cofield, and again, he is dropped immediately by Eggman. Read it perfectly for a loss of three. The senior captain's been all over the place. Brian and I have talked about him, and here is Eggman making another play. Fourth his, and ten. His 12th tackle already here this afternoon. Boy, he just split the two blockers out there. Cordell Vols and Christian Watson, neither could get a solid chip on him. Came oh, flying punt. through. A punt, we haven't had many of these today. Mm. Wagner, again, will try to pin the Bears deep and another fair catch made at the 10-yard line but the by Bison Kendall Stewart. Still have that two-score two advantage, though. That's the key thing here, the Bison can play field position all day and winner by two touchdowns. Gate City Bank is proud to support the NDSU Bison. Show your Bison pride today with a free NDSU Gate City Bank debit card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. Missouri State's defense is really keeping the Bears in the game, stymieing the North Dakota State attack, but this group has to get something going on the offensive side. Huslig dropping it off to DeMaurier Vick. Hendricks going for a strip and then a bunch of buys in there to help after a gain of five. Not that it's a hard read, but it's certainly the correct read. You see how Jabril Cox was sneaking, sneaking up to the edge on the outside and the line of scrimmage comes on a blitz. Well, you pass or you go to where the blitzer was. It's, it's a, a fairly simple play, effective. It works for half of what you need for the first down. Here comes pressure from 42. I'll get a quick pass off, and we'll gain half of what we need.
Daniels has some room. And he's across the 20 to the 23 for a first down. We'll get them organized here on first and ten. Looking, firing high, and Thomas going up high to make the catch. And that'll be enough for another first down gain of ten to the 33. Hendricks on the tackle. Little double route combination at first. I thought he was looking to the inside where it looked like Jabril Cox had pretty good uh, presence there. But nope, he's going to the outside, pass a little high. Nodak Insurance Company replay pulls her down. Justin Kramer, the offensive coordinator, has been with the program for about five years. This is the first time, though, he's been the OC. Huesling on the option, flipping it out to Daniels. Oh, boy, not going to outrun that man. Jabril Cox tracking him down and dropping him for a loss of five. A couple of years ago, the Bears did a lot of this option type of look, more with the quarterback intent to run. This you could tell it was an early pitch. I don't know, man. Running option to that side, guy's side of the field is <laughs> never going to work. He's just too fast. Huslick going to run. Costner Chang coming off his block and taking him down. No gain on the play. Will bring up third and long. Chang, the sophomore from Castlewood. One of the guys who came here, walk on to get his opportunity, and he has earned his way under the two deep and into a semi regular rotation on the defensive line. Next week will be an interesting one for him. His uh, father really played at South Dakota. Really State. close to Brookings, isn't it? <laughs> Between Watertown and Brookings is where Castlewood is. Bears 3 of 12 on third down. Huslig flushed out. Buying some time. Flag comes in, and now he's going to try to run and get what he can. Jabril Cox throws him down at the 35-yard line. It's a hold, which you could easily have guessed. He was able to gain about seven yards on that run. Holding. Office number 71. Phillies decline. Fourth down. Lee, how excited are you for another punt? I'm really excited for it. <laughs> Punts and penalties. At least that penalty was declined. <laughs> that won't go down in the yep, books. That won't count. This punt, though, that'll count. Oh, oh Withrow really has struggled here the last couple punts. That one will go into the books for about a 20-yarder. We step aside, 9-14 to go, North Dakota State. 15-0, good field position again when we come back. Dakota State. The Bison in the previous four meetings in Fargo against Missouri State has won by an average of 46 points. They are not going to win by 46 points here today. No, the most lopsided win in Valley history for the Bison is a 55-pointer against Missouri State. Run up the middle. Gain of three as Kobe Johnson gets the carry. I know the Bison have had yards and only two touchdowns at this point, but this Missouri State defense is not the same defense that was on the field last week. No, totally different. Lance going to take a shot downfield for Sproles, but well overthrown, incomplete. Cam Carter on the coverage will bring up third and along again. It's a third and seven. 
Sproles running a post. Lance almost let that thing go more like it was a straight fly pattern, trying to get him to run underneath it, but there was certainly angle in that pass, pass route. Lance, plenty of time in the pocket across the middle, and the reception is made by Kapuris inside the 30 before he is tackled at about the 24-yard line. So a big third down conversion for North Dakota State. We'll get the Bison in pretty good shape here inside Missouri State territory. And that's what the Bison needed, stay on the field on third down. Paris Jackson trying to go against Kapuris, and that's a long way on a deep, or not a deep drag, but just such a, a long drag to try to hang with him and stay in position. Darius Joseph, Titus Wall teaming up for the tackle. We're up the middle for Cofield. Just tripped up on the play by Joseph. Still a good gain on first down of eight yards to the 17. Good work out of Austin Avery. He's the uh, tight end, kind of hybrid position, but sliding back into the fullback position, 46 is the guy who makes one of the key blocks right at the point of attack. The Bison pick up, I think eight. Back to the ground game. Dimitri Williams taken down by Eggman. Well, this guy's having a ball game, isn't he? We'll bring up third and two. Eggman, an interesting guy, born in Nigeria, is an entertainment management major. He can manage you, LT. You're an entertainer. <laughs> he would go broke. <laughs> Third and two for the Bison. Ground game again. Oh, he's not going to get there. Coming off the edge and making the stop was McClellan, helped out by Lovelace. Now we'll see what Matt Entz wants to do. Somebody looks like they're hurt. Right, we're looking at McClellan go off, and that is Eggbim, I Eggbim. think. As they look at Eggbim, we will head to break. 6.19 to go here in the fourth quarter from the Fargo Dome. Kate City Bank fan cam picks. Hey, it's folks close. down in Don't South be. Dakota, enemy territory. Arlington, Virginia, how about that one? <laughs> Mesa, Arizona, there are Bison fans all over the place. Thanks to all you for submitting your watch party picks from wherever you are. That's five different states represented there. Fourth down, the Bison go for it, and Lance is going to keep it. That's, oh, he had it if he wanted to throw it. And Lance is going to do what he can to get the first down. Now to the five, Lance. Did he get in? They talked about it. No signal yet. Mark him out at the one, I think. From no one yard line, first down. Insurance company replay. Lance has been so good this year at finishing. Elfson kind of pulling him along, pulling him along. Ooh. Out. No, out. We're I don't take a look at it. Do you think he stayed inside the pylon? That's where the ball is. End zone look may give us a better vision of where the ball was placed as he went out of bounds. Look from up high. And it certainly was a touchdown. Babbage I mean, was all I mean, ball. that's Gindorf, I think. Oh, was it? Yep. was wide open. But then here's Elson just pulling him along. I don't know, LT. That's close. I think he may have been in there. I mean, we don't have a good angle from where we are, but my first thought was that he was short.
The feet aren't out. Ball right there. Is he reaching across the plane inside that pylon? That's the question. The field stands. Ball only plays to the one yard line. First down. Not enough there certainly to overturn anything, but close. Closer than I initially thought. Now we have another whistle. Okay, I guess now we're ready. First and goal at the one for the Bison. Cofield's the tailback. He's going to get the carry. Pushing ahead into the end zone. Touchdown. Second touchdown on the day for Cofield. Really had to give some extra effort to get that pile to move so he could take it into the end zone and pick up his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. Nodak Insurance Company replay, throw a lot of bodies at you. Garbutt trying to keep him out, and Cofield is in. Cross on for the extra point. He boots that through, and it's 22 0 North Dakota State. 5.48 to go in the football game. Hasn't been the prettiest thing. No punt. But <laughs> North Dakota State pretty close to picking up win number seven on the season. Bob Camp scoring recap. Eight plays, 54 yards, and just under three and a half minutes as Cofield finishes it off. His second rushing touchdown of the day, Cofield, a game high 93 yards rushing on 12 carries. Here's a look at the Missouri native. I believe it was last week he went over 1,000 for his Bison career, too. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kickoff your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Fair catch called for and made by Jalen Henderson. Dakota State will take on South Dakota State next Saturday in Brookings. The Jackrabbits winning at Indiana State today, 42 to 23. And how about this one? South Dakota, a three-point lead at Northern Iowa, 24-21. That game is still in the second quarter. A lot of points so far so down at Cedar Falls. So you're telling me I've got to start to switch my opinion on the Coyotes? Have a chance to remain unbeaten in league play. That pass from Huslig off the mark, looking first tailback Mike Myron Mason. That Jackrabbit game, too, down in Terre Haute. A little bit of a sluggish start, and then South Dakota State exploded a little bit. Here's kind of a puzzling one. Youngstown State, <laughs> after right. unraveling in the fourth quarter against South Dakota State and losing by 18, lost at Southern Illinois today 35-10. Tough to figure out the fighting Pelinis, yep. <laughs> A tough team to figure out. Huslig firing to Tyler Curry, quickly dropped by Destin Talbert, a yard short of the first down at the 34. You know with Missouri State today, though, I mean, the Bears aren't going to come out of here with a win. But, but what was the w one thing that stood out to me in Coach Steckel's uh, comments after last week and then into this week? We have been a three-quarter football team. They've played four quarters of football today. Have not turned the football over, have had some penalties, but have not done anything in terms of a self-inflicted wound or really hurt themselves today. But I think the problem is what we saw right there. I mean, Can't run. The, the Bears have just not been able to run the football efficiently this year. Daniels does get enough for a first down there, picking up a yard. But that's now just 24 yards rushing total for the Bears today. Fresh start up front, difficult thing to do. I mean, they're big kids. I don't know how athletic the offensive line is. That'll hurt you. Huslig firing again. And Curry 
making his fourth catch. Came into this game leading the Missouri Valley with nearly six receptions a game. Buying, building, or refinancing. Start with a free, immediate pre-approval from Gate City Bank and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCity.Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Husel is going to take a shot downfield. Curry trying to make an adjustment to come back for the football, but out of his reach will bring up third down. The Bears have struggled to get the ball down the field this year. Coming into today after five games, and this is counting punt returns, kick returns, everything. The Bears have only had 16 plays, 25 yards or longer. That's not a lot. The Bison have had, what, coming into this game, 47 plays yep. over 20 yards. Yep, close to 50. Huesling on the slant behind his intended target, but the reception is made by his tight end, Jordan Murray, and that will move the sticks to midfield. Easily the most productive spot on the field today have been in that slot, kind of in between the numbers here on those short little passes. Murray, a touchdown reception against South Dakota last week, the only touchdown for the Bears. Huesling again. again is the catch is made by DeMaurier Vick. Jabril Cox there on the tackle immediately, but still a pickup of close to eight yards. Maybe they'll give him nine. Oh boy, Aaron Snap, Kuslick keeps his wits about him, but he is going to go down. Finished off. Lane Tucker. Yeah. On the backup defensive tackles, young man from Wyoming getting a chance to play some extended reps will bring up third and four. Yep, Lane's from Gillette, played at Campbell County High School. And that young man is learning a new position. Jake Caba was switched over to defensive end from linebacker and has had an opportunity to play quite a bit here in the last month of the season. He has. They, re they uh, put him in fairly early. Of course, Jake's in his redshirt freshman year. from just across the river, played his high school ball on this side of the river, though. Right, Chandler. Huslick, another slant. And the target was Antoine Woods. Does not have a reception this season. We'll bring up fourth down. You have to think the Bears will go for it here. Nothing to lose. This copyright broadcast is property of North Dakota State University. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or distribution without the consent of NDSU is strictly prohibited. And you see Derek Tuska. Out of uniform with the headset on. He did warm up. I was surprised they even did that with Tuska today, but he did come out and warm up, and then the intent was not to play him. Huslick will throw it off the hands of Vic, incomplete, and a turnover on downs with 2.43 to go. First and 10, North Dakota State. And the Bison will continue to lead the nation with only seven touchdowns allowed. And as you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Lee, six of those were given up by the defense. One was a fumble return by in the Butler, Butler in the opener. Johnson in a tailback. He'll get the carry. Ran over the back of his big offensive lineman, Nash Jensen. Was able to gain four, close to five yards to the 48. The Bison were hoping to get Zeb Nolan some reps, and not just reps at handing off, but to get him in this game with an opportunity to try to complete some passes and get his uh, see what he can do on tape on this offense. Obviously, the way the scoreboard was reading, it just, it just didn't happen. So we'll have to wait another day for Zeb Nolan to get some meaningful reps. Randy Hedberg said, look, he, this kid's doing he a good job really in good. practice. Yeah. yeah. Sabian Clark, his first carry, <laughs> pushed one of his offensive <laughs> linemen out of the way. That was shooting. And fell ahead to about the 47-yard line. <laughs> He's like, Carson, if you're going to pull, keep running. <laughs> 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 well, what, suppo what shooting's supposed to do is get up into the hole and then try to seal. So he's turning, seeing if he's able to, to pick off somebody who's coming on a, on a diagonal run fit. <laughs> and uh, Clark just ran right through it. 
know, if North Dakota State can pick up this third down, the Bison will take a couple of knees and get out of here with this 22 to nothing victory. Clark is able to do that. You were secretly hoping for one more punt. <laughs> Uh, I will move the chains to the 45. 120 left. Well, it's not a beauty contest in terms of the wins and losses. So just remember that. You're going to have a game somewhere along the line. This Bison team is young. You knew that it wouldn't perform at its highest level all season long. It didn't happen today. But you still have a shutout victory. So by 22 yeah, points. You'll take that. Absolutely. The Bison will get ready to head to Brookings for the Dakota Marker game next Saturday afternoon at Dana J. Dykow Stadium in Brookings. Ironically enough, that was the last time North Dakota State has lost, lost a football game. Yeah, I mean, that was the Marker game two, two years, years ago. ago. 27 straight wins for this program coming in. Now 28 with the victory here today over Missouri State. 22-0 will be the final as the two head coaches head to midfield. Missouri State will have to try to get back on track. The Bears just one win on the season. And that came two weeks ago against Western Illinois. And you, But you certainly can't say that the Bears didn't do some, some decent things today, some fairly good things. Offensively, running game didn't happen. You knew that probably wouldn't, but defensively, as many times as uh, Missouri State was or was able to force Andy Eshu to punt today. The old not in a million years quote, not in a million years, I think. The Bison will have to punt that many times today. Northern Iowa heads to Springfield for homecoming next Saturday afternoon. A win is a win is a win. You take them out where you can get them, especially in Missouri Valley Conference play. 22-0 is the final. Ryan Gellner will try to catch a word here with Matt Entz in just a moment. You have to say the Bison defense still played well. Missouri State just 21 rushing yards today, 185 total. Yeah, 163. We saw Huslick there. He had 164 yards, which in today's world is not very many through the year. And he had Under one. 200 yards of total offense. Yeah, pretty good. Goose egg on the scoreboard. Yeah, the Bison defense. Again, 109 of those passing yards came in the first half, so they really did shut down even the passing attack in that second half. Brian Gellner is now standing by with the North Dakota State head coach. First time all season, pitched a shutout. You got to feel good about the defense. Yep, yep, Dave did a great job in the defensive staff, putting a good plan together. Those guys made some key adjustments, I think, at halftime, kept changing up on third down, and when you can be 77% successful, that's a good day, and you get off the field. Offensively, you get 22 points, just out of rhythm in, at times today. Yeah, just too 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 often we were behind the chain. Too many second and longs, uh, inefficient first downs, and I think that creates then third and longs, and then the penalty deal. There's too, way too many penalties for a team that likes to hang their hat on being disciplined. 22 nothing. That's it's not a bad score. Uh, maybe not up to your standards, nope, I, but that's pretty good. There's plenty of things to learn off of this week, but. Uh, Half the, half the teams in the country got beat today, so we'll take a win. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Guys? All right. Thanks so much, Ryan. And yeah, look, 7-0 is 7-0, man. I don't <laughs> care how you win them. You take them however you can get them, and the Bison will celebrate this one very quickly and then get to work for the Jackrabbits. That'll be a battle of a couple of Missouri Valley heavyweights and certainly wish the best for Zach Mathis moving forward this season as well. 22 nothing's the final. We'll be back to talk about it more after this on the KBLY KMYR Bison Television Network. Twenty-two nothing the final from the Fargo Dome, North Dakota State three and zero in Missouri Valley football conference play and seven and zero overall. Brian, Sean, Lee Timberman with you. Thanks so much for joining us here this afternoon on the KBLY KMYR Bison Television Network. And if you like punting, this was the game for you. 17, <laughs> 17. of them today <laughs> between the two uh, teams and uh, a lot of penalties to go along with them, LT. Yeah, I, what did I t add up there? 31 total punts and penalties. That's uh, way too many. Uh, the Bison punted seven times today. The Bears punted 10. Well, let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. Credit to our replay guys for finding <laughs> them today. And North Dakota, State, some, North Dakota State did start off really well in that first quarter, was able to make some plays through the air. 
Trey Lance able to survey around the field, still hit a bunch of different receivers and have some efficient drives over there. He did. He spread the ball around fairly well. Phoenix Rolls ended up catching six balls today. Demetri Williams had four catches as well. And he adds to his rushing touchdown total. 21-yard touchdown run. Seven-yard, uh, seven touchdown runs on the season. James Hendricks, another two-point conversion. The Bison have not been shy about doing this. No, it's been after the first touchdown, too, I believe, each time they've tried it. And uh, when it's worked, it's been James getting the two-pointers off that direct snap because he's also the holder. Peyton Huesling was able to hang in there. He took some hits, but give the kid credit. He was still able to deliver some good footballs today. Yeah, he knows he's going to have to take some punishment for this offense to be successful, and uh, he did do that fairly well today. But this is the long, long play of the day. Yeah, 58-yard run from Adam Cofield. Got some great blocking downfield. Look at Zach Mathis continuing to drive his guy back. And that got the Bison out of a pretty deep hole inside their own territory. Down to the 35-yard line. And then Lance trying to set up that screen to Williams. And that young man played really well, Matt McClellan, today off the edge. Undersized defensive end, only 214 pounds, but quick twitch. Uh, uses his speed. He was in the backfield. There he makes a play, to, uh, you know, knocking that ball down. And Bison able to turn the corner here. One of the longer runs as well. As Cofield was able to get out in space and get down to the 10. Cofield ends up with 93 yards today, and of course he got into the end zone twice. Toby Johnson also getting on the field for a handful of plays, and this was a nice run. Flag came in, though, on this play. And I believe they picked up the flag. Yep, they did. Uh, the first it was, it was called an illegal block, but it wasn't. And then North Dakota State able to get the first touchdown run of the day from Cofield, and it was 15-0 at halftime. And, you know, for the Bison, I think, you know, they... They went in feeling really good about themselves, just could not get on track as we take a look at. Okay, can we say that? But when we look at this, the, yeah, the numbers it's, look it's good. It's pretty impressive. Brought to you by the North Dakota Certified Seed Producers. I mean, the rushing yards, I mean, look at that. I mean, it does. It, when you look at the stats wholly, it, it still looks like another really strong performance. Yeah, the Bison end up with 225 on the ground, 447. So, uh, you know, those numbers certainly would indicate that that was a dominating performance by NDSU's offense today. Time of possession, so you plus seven minutes. And in the end, it certainly does appear that way on paper. It just took us a while to get there, and it really wasn't pretty when we got there either. But in, but in the end, the Bison did what they had to. Defense gives up zero points, and the Bison score 22. And in the end, those are the only two things that count. And the penalties when they came, came in some of the worst positions possible yeah. after third down conversions or after a big play that was taking them back. So, Or third and one turns into third and six, yep. and then you're third and long, and you pun end up punting after that. Yeah, that, Those are the things that defeat any type of momentum that you're trying to produce or, or keep up. But a 22-point victory in the Valley still works for North Dakota State as the Bison get ready for a pair of road trips now to South Dakota State and Youngstown State. We'll be back with a look at some of your second-half highlights after this. Back at the Fargo Dome, 22-0 your final today as we continue our post-game roundup. From here at the Fargo Dome, Brian Sean, Lee Timmerman with you, and Ryan Gellner is down on the field with uh, one of the guys today that caught a few big balls for the North Dakota yeah, State three offense. Three catches today. Yeah, guys, three catches, 41 yards for Jimmy Kapuris. Quickly becoming a fan favorite around here. Uh, Jimmy, when your number's called, you get it done. Some big catches today. Yep, I mean, I... You can't put that on me. You got to give it to the old line and Trey. You know he's been doing a great job making his reads and putting the ball where it's got to be. So today the offense a little bit different for North Dakota State. It was it just didn't have that feel. What was going on today? Uh, you know I think we came out a little slow. I think uh, you know during the week our preparation wasn't as good as it was the week before, and I think that we know that and we need to step it up next week, especially for this big game we got coming up. Your personal story is uh, it's pretty cool. You transfer here. The knee blows out. Now it's kind of your redemption year, and, and man, you're making some big catches. This must be really gratifying for you. Yeah, it really is, and I, I love the sport that they have here in Fargo. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, 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 it's different, honestly. I haven't had something like this. Even at my old school, it wasn't like this, so it's really special, the thing that people do here in Fargo. The offense uh, we've seen become explosive on the ground, through the air. Got to be something fun to play in. Oh, yeah. I mean, like I said, give that to Trey. Trey's been doing a great job. You know, he's so dynamic. He, he can get it done, whether he's got to run the ball, throw the ball, whatever he has to do, make the check. He's, 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 he's doing it done, or he's getting it done. You move to 7-0, and which is hugely important in this league. Uh, now the real tough part of the schedule comes. Uh, 
your thoughts on just uh, the road that's still to come? Um, I mean, I've, I've yet to play South Dakota State, so this is going to be something special for me. You know, I want to go out there and, and make a statement to them, let them know who I am. You know, uh, obviously, it's been a rivalry for a while, so it's going to be an exciting week. It's going to be a lot, of, a lot of energy all week. It should be fun. You've been fun to watch play and uh, look forward to the rest of the season. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Guys, we'll throw it back upstairs to you. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. Yeah, Jimmy Kapur is a young man that has had to overcome a lot, transferring from Western Michigan, blowing out a knee, finally getting his opportunity here in his senior year uh, to make a play. And, and honestly, the Bison really need that, that slot position, position to, to be effective. And this guy stepped into the role, done a nice job. Uh, the Bison have been searching for some consistent production from that spot since Ryan Smith graduated. They really have. So whatever Kapuris can give them is such a huge benefit and uh, just help have that weapon in the inner part of the field and eventually it'll help open up the outside too. Let's take a look at some of the second half highlights. There were not a lot of them. If you like punting, there was a lot of them. There are not a lot of other ones. As North Coast State did get a couple plays, Dimitri Williams, more reps today. I think that's encouraging for him moving forward. Yeah, he missed time early this year. Here's uh, Christian Watson coming back and then high pointing the ball, bringing it down. That was probably the best uh, catch of the day out on the edge. He is, uh, his maturation has, has been fun to watch. He's turning into one heck of a player. And Kapurs, the guy that we just talked to, that was a big third down catch. One of the bigger passing plays today for Trey Lance. That was a 26-yard gain for Jimmy. And on the play action, this is third and one, and Lance keeping it. And he was close to getting in. I mean, this was really close. They didn't mark him out at the one. But North Dakota State in the next play took care of business as Cofield pushed his way across. Following Jensen, getting his back turned to the line, and then just chugging backwards as hard as he can. He knows he only has a couple of yards to gain, and he got, uh, what, two or three yards deep into the end zone. So he's been able to, to continue to show how he can finish runs this year. And Cofield has continued to get more and more carries each week. Has kind of been the guy that they've relied on in those short yardage situations, certainly. We step aside one more time. We'll be back with a look ahead to next week's opponents, the Missouri Valley Conference scoreboard and our NODAC Insurance Company player. Trey Lance on the field. He's a popular guy. <laughs> Taking a lot of photos. When you're the today. starting quarterback of an undefeated number one ranked team. Yep. It's not bad. Well, North Dakota State pitching its first shutout since the victory last December over Colgate. 22-0 is the final. Brian Sean Lee Timmerman with you. And Ryan Gellner is on the field with the Nodak Insurance Company player of the game who led the Bison in tackles today with nine. Yeah, nine tackles, six of those solo for Jackson Hankey. And game had a little bit of a weird feel to it, but uh, in the end, you get the W. It did. Um, you know, I'm satisfied with the result. Uh, you know, as a defense, you know, this was code green week. We put an extra emphasis on, on playing well and playing to our principles. And, and our goal was to come out here and, and get a shutout, and we accomplished that. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it was a great day. Not just the shutout. They had 21 rushing yards and 185 total yards. Those numbers are outstanding for a defense. You know, as far as the rushing yards go, you know, our D-line, uh, those guys do not get enough credit. You know, at it seems like every game, those guys, I mean, they dominate teams. You know, sometimes I go to fit my gap, and there's not even a gap for me to fit. You know, those guys, those guys do a fantastic job. So. I got to ask you about the hit up against the sideline. You and I were just talking about it before we came on, and you laid a lick on that kid. Must have felt good. <clears throat> it did. You know, it, it, it felt really good. Uh, you know, playing football, you look for that opportunity to hit somebody like that, you know, when you got when you got to run and start and they got nowhere to go. You know, it, it's a... Uh, it's one of the best plays there is in football. So, The pride of Park River, you know what's next. South Dakota State is on the calendar next. I know you want to celebrate this win for at least 24 hours, but we're on TV. We're going to make you look forward to that South Dakota State game. It's a big one in this area. It is, and I can't wait. You know, this is my first time preparing, you know, getting ready to start against these guys. So I, you know, it's going to be a big game at South Dakota State, and I can't wait to get out there. The NODAC Insurance Player of the Game, congratulations. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Guys, back upstairs. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. Thank you, Jackson Hankey. And this is a guy that has really stepped into his role and done a nice job here in his first year as a starter at Mike Linebacker. Uh, I mean, he has the stats with the tackles and all that, but Jackson's main job is to get everybody organized. He's the guy that gets the play call and then, you know, spreads it out to the team. He's the guy that has to communicate with the defensive line if there's any checks. So uh, Jackson Hankey mentally what he brings to the field is probably 
as or more important than what he can physically bring to that position. I mean, he's he's the glue. It's it starts with him. Let's take a look at some other scores from around Missouri, Missouri Valley. South Dakota State taking care of business on the road at Indiana State after a big road win at Youngstown State last week. And the Jackrabbits undefeated in Missouri Valley Conference play. The only blemish on the record. A season opening loss at Minnesota, a game the Jacks Which easily could have won. Could have won, yeah. yes. Illinois State, not the best performance. Kind of sluggish today, but picking up a win in Macomb by 14. And then uh, Youngstown State, so that's a puzzling yeah, one. Yeah, go ahead and shake your head at that one. But also, congratulate the Salukis on a nice win. That's right. McHale trying to get things turned around in South Dakota, Northern Iowa, in a shootout right now down at the Unidome in Cedar Falls. Next week's opponent, we pack up the truck, we head down to Jackrabbit Country in Brookings. That LT is going to be one heck of a matchup between two top five teams. Yeah, the Jackrabbits uh, should, no reason they won't stay number three in the polls. The Bison are number one. And uh, of course the marker game, we talked about it a little bit earlier. If you didn't hit on that, we'll talk about it all week. But the last time NDSU failed to win a football game was down in Brookings and that was two years ago. And it means a lot to both teams, both schools, both states, it's fun. And again, these two teams met in the national in the semifinals, semifinals last, last year. year in December as well. Should be a fun one. We hope you join us next Saturday afternoon. The Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show will begin at 1 o'clock, kickoff at 2 o'clock from Dana J. Dykehouse Stadium in Brookings, South Dakota. We appreciate you joining us here this afternoon for this punt fest <laughs> all across the KVLI KFYR Bison Television Network. For Lee Timmerman, Beth Rule, Kyle Emanuel, Alex Egan, and our entire NBC crew, I'm Brian Sean saying so long from the Fargo Dome. We'll see you next Saturday afternoon from Bookings for the Dakota, Dakota Marker matchup. 22-0 is your final here this afternoon as North Dakota State has won 28 straight games. So long, everybody. <laughs>